Every app project must have an Android manifest.xml file with precisely that name as the root of the project source set. The manifest file describes essential information about your app to the Android build tools, the Android operating system, and Google Play. So you want to be a professional Android app developer, but you don't know where you should start, what things you should learn, you came to the right place. Welcome to our top bestseller Android app development course, a comprehensive program designed to equip you with the skills and knowledge required to excel in the exciting field of Android app development. Among many other things, the manifest file is required to declare the following. The components of the app, which include all activities, services, broadcast receivers, and content providers. Each component must define basic properties such as the name of its Kotlin or Java class. It can also declare capabilities such as which device configuration can handle and intent filters that describe how the component can be started. The permissions that the permissions that the app needs in order to access protected parts of the system or other apps. It also declares any permissions that other apps must have if they want to access content from this app. The hardware and software features. The app requires which affects which devices can install the app from Google Play. So, in general, the manifest file is a file in Android applications. It's a, a necessary file. It contains the three things, the three main parts or three declarations. The components of the app, the activities, services, broadcast receivers, and content providers, the permissions the app needed, and the hardware and software features the app requires. Let's go deep in the manifest. Let's talk about the app components. For each app component that you can create in your application, you must declare a corresponding XML element in the manifest file. So if you create a new activity in your application, the activity tag should be replaced and added inside this activity or Android manifest. So activity tag for each subclass of activity, service tag for each subclass of service. If you create a receiver, broadcast receiver, you can use the, and you should use the receiver tag and the provider for subclass of the content provider. If you subclass any of these components without declaring it in the manifest file, the system cannot start. The name of your subclass must be specified with the name attribute using the full package design designation. For example, if you can see here, a new activity called my activity is added here in under the activity tag and here the name attribute. Intent filter. App activities, services, and broadcast receivers are activated by intents. An intent is a message defined by an intent object that describes an action to perform. And we'd seen the uh, intents in the previous videos. Including the data to be acted upon. The category of component that should perform the action and the other instruction. Okay, so the intent filter, like in this example, an app component can have any number of intent filters defined with the intent filter tag element, each one describing a different capability of that component. 
In this case, if you look closer on this example, intent filter, you can see the launcher activity. So the, the name and the category is launcher. So the intent.category.launcher, this uh, specify that is using this intent filter, we tell Android Studio that my activity, this activity, which is named my activity, is the launcher activity. So when the user opens the app, my activity should be first displayed. Icons and labels. Several manifest elements can ha have or have icon and label attributes for displaying a small icon and a text label, respectively, to users for the corresponding component. In every case, the icon and label that are set in parent element become the default icon and label value for all children elements. For example, the icon and label that are set in the application element are the default icon and label for each of the app's components, such as all activities. Permissions. Android app or Android apps must request permission to access sensitive user data, such as a contact and SMS, or certain system features, such as camera and internet access. Each permission is defined by a unique label. For example, if an app needs to access the internet, it must have the following line in the manifest uses permission android name android the permission dot internet so in this case we define that this application needs internet to access the internet so we are adding the permission permission okay and the other permissions that the app requests like reading the storage writing the storage and accessing sms contact